when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. One of the advantages of using music as a medium, as an intervention, is music is so flexible. So we can change in the moment and we can use various aspects to best meet the need of the individual. So we're not stuck into any one way of working. It's very flexible so that it can be very person-centered. Dementia is a progressive decline of cognitive functions in which people will gradually lose memories of their past. Bender et al. describe those with dementia aptly as the inhabitants of a lost kingdom. The number of dementia-related cases are rising rapidly due to worldwide aging populations, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. While there is no current disease-modifying treatment for any common dementia, delaying dementia's onset would benefit even the oldest adults. Many approaches have been developed to preserve or stimulate recollection of important life events with dementia patients in order to improve their quality of life. Many of these approaches depend on verbal communication. One of the most powerful cues to regain access to forgotten memories is music. Music can be a powerful activity for those with dementia since music has the potential to increase physical and social activity, reignite past memories, and improve sleep mood, cognition, communication, and overall quality of life. So music therapy is a self-regulated profession here in Canada. It's regulated by the Canadian Association of Music Therapists. In order for somebody to work as a music therapist, they need to meet all the mandates of the CAMT, which includes completing either an undergraduate degree or a master's in music therapy, as well as 1,000 hour internships supervised by an accredited music therapist. And there is then a board exam that needs to be completed. And once the individual has become accredited, they will have the skill set to use various aspects of music to reach healthcare goals. Music is something that we all engage in, and for that reason, music therapists can work with individuals of all ages with all different diagnoses. And dementia, even though an individual has declining cognitive ability, their ability to engage in music remains intact. So this is a wonderful tool that music therapists can access in facilitating quality of life, evoking memories, providing ways to communicate with others and to self-express. So when we're working in dementia care, individuals are at various stages with the illness. So there could be an individual who, for example, as a result of dementia, they have wandering behaviors. It's difficult for them to engage in meaningful activities. And so a session in that case might be the music therapist walking with that person and starting to sing with that individual and by singing together. And what's important to mention is not just randomly singing any song, but a song that is relevant to that individual. So the music therapist needs to do their homework and ensure that they understand what are the music preferences of that individual, what are pieces of that person's history, family events that can inform how to best engage musically with that person. So a session might be walking along with somebody who's wandering and using meaningful music, singing with them to start engaging. An individual may have exit-seeking behaviors as part of their confusion. And so, for example, one lady would walk around a facility I worked at and would be quite agitated. And she was continually saying the same phrase of how she needs to go home and the family is waiting for her. She needs to feed the kids and um, was quite distressed and very confused. I was aware that she had connections to Scotland and I would come up beside her and just start singing. Um, you take the high road and I'll take the low road. And then she would just stop and look at me and we would start singing together. And then I could distract her from that anxiety she was experiencing. But other individuals, they may be restricted to their room. So they may not be physically able to 
um, ambulate. So then the music therapy session may take place in their room, bringing in the guitar or bringing in a keyboard and engaging musically, whether again, it's singing or providing a percussion instrument to the individual to participate in together. Other times the individual may not be able to interact in the session and then the techniques may be more what we call passive. In that case, we're looking at the breathing of the individual as they're laying in their bed. And again, uh, using music that we know has some kind of meaning and then playing that music again, perhaps on the guitar or piano and playing it to the rhythm of that individual. So just trying to engage with that person with what they are providing in that space. And it could also be in a group setting. Family members could be a part of it. We could be doing songwriting. We could be improvising music. There's very many ways that a session could take place. Depending on what stage that person is at with their dementia, their needs are going to vary. I really feel that treating the person as a whole person is a really important piece of healthcare and well-being. So that means looking at everything and there are certain things that interventions like music therapy cannot facilitate and there are certain things that pharmaceuticals cannot facilitate. So we really need to bring this whole, all these pieces together and work in this manner where we're all on the same team to provide the best quality of life for an individual. So I feel that we can enhance. So for example, if an individual is taking pain medication or they're taking medication to support lucidity and cognition, we can further enhance that when we're using music. Music is a natural way to distract from pain, uh, to evoke positive feelings. So music and pharmaceuticals work very well together. In a music therapy session, as I mentioned, there's so many different techniques, whether it be using pre-composed, meaningful music, the singing, the songwriting, improvising. And I think one thing that's important to recognize when we're talking about using pre-composed music, it's not merely picking up the guitar and just singing a song to somebody. Now, there is definitely therapeutic value to doing that. So if a family member was to go in with their guitar and play music to a loved one, that's amazing. Like definitely there's therapeutic value to that. In a music therapy session, the clinician is thinking about how to use that pre-composed piece of music to elicit a response. So for example, a piece of music like, um, da -da. Mm -hmm. da -da -da -da. So starting off with just humming a melody or la 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 a melody so that it's just softly introducing something that is familiar and giving the brain time to respond, to process, to hear what's going on. And then uh, the music therapist is looking to see, is the individual responding? Do they seem to be recognized? What's this piece of music, for example? And then bringing in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, so singing it maybe a little bit more slowly than usual. And again, while singing, like trying to make eye contact, looking to see, are they starting to tap their toe? So it's not, again, merely just singing to, but singing with, singing as a way to engage and elicit a response. And, and then giving moments for the individual to, to join. So how I want to be in that and pausing and waiting for them to say number. <laughs> and the reality is that when our brain is healthy or when our brain is experiencing dementia and it recognizes a melody, if that melody phrase is interrupted, the brain starts to fire and it 
wanting that phrase to be brought to, to a closure. And that is what elicits this response. And an individual with dementia who rarely speaks, for example, rarely engages, will more often than not fill in the blanks of a song when the music therapist pauses and waits and provides that musical space. So, um, so that's a technique that music therapists use. And just because somebody does have a diagnosis like dementia, it doesn't mean that there are not healthy areas that we cannot still connect with. And music is a wonderful vehicle to find those healthy areas to enhance one's abilities. Mm -hmm.